and we are grateful today for the men and women of our armed services uh, that are serving currently, those that have served in, in the past. And I just want to remind you this morning we have the American flag on the communion table, and, and many of you may not be aware that we've had eight men in the course of the history of this congregation that have died in military service to our country. And their names are in the bulletin this morning, and there's a plaque right outside that door that honors and celebrates their service. And so, uh, so we want to be mindful of that as we gather in this place this morning. Being positive. Being positive. You know, there was a, a book that was uh, printed several years ago, and the, the, the title kind of spoke to me as a dad. It said, Raising positive kids in a negative world. And it just talked about how difficult, challenging it is to raise kids with a positive attitude, a positive spirit, in a world that is filled with so much negativity. And you know, you and I don't have to look far at all to just find a sea of just the negative. You know, we turn on the TV, and uh, opinions are just all over the place, negative. Uh, we talk with people sometimes at work or friends that we have, and negative. In fact, I was at a conference some time ago, and, and a speaker said this, and I realize sometimes at conferences things get a little oversimplified, you know, for the purpose of making a point. This is a little oversimplified, but the point kind of resonated with me. The speaker said there are two kinds of people in the world, there are radiators and there are drains. And the radiators are people who radiate, just like a radiator does heat, people who radiate just warmth, friendliness. They have a good vibe, a good spirit about them. They come in, they're upbeat, they're positive. They're just fun to hang around. They're radiators. And then there are people that are drained. And these are people that just completely suck the energy out of the room. They're complaining, they're always negative, the weekend was never good, the day is never good, they don't like their job, they don't like their boss, they don't like really anybody on the planet, and they just simply drain the energy and any positive feeling in the group or the room or the setting just, just away. And you know, that's true. All of us have been around folks that are radiators, and we know what that feels like. And we want to hang around people that are radiators. And we've also been around people that are drains, and we, we know what that, what that feels like. Well, for the next few Sundays, I want us to think about being positive Christians in a negative world. Because out of all the people on the face of the earth that ought to be upbeat, positive, radiators, it's God's people. It's you and me. It's you and me. And so over the next few Sundays, we're going to talk about those characteristics, those attitudes, those choices of attitude that we can have in being encouraging, being generous, being enthusiastic, being confident that will allow us to stay positive, to be positive Christians in what is seemingly and increasingly a negative, negative world. And so this morning we're going to look at the attitude of being grateful, of being grateful. You know, someone said, happy people are grateful. I want to flip that around because I'm not quite sure that's, that's true. But I do believe this is a biblical truth. Grateful people are happy. When you and I are grateful and are thankful people, we're happy. And so two scriptures this morning. One is from Psalm 103, the opening uh, five verses of that psalm, and then a, a word of wisdom from the book of, of Proverbs. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget. 
forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things. And then this word of wisdom from Proverbs 11, 27. He who eagerly seeks what is good finds much favor. We are, in essence, what we seek. When we seek good things, when we seek positive things, we then have a positive spirit. Favor rests upon us. And so this morning, I want us to think again about being positive Christians in what is often a negative world. And I want to offer two fundamental foundational thoughts for this series and as we think about the topic of the message this morning. And that is that being a positive person, being optimistic is a choice. Is a choice. You and I can choose, in the case of this morning, to be grateful or ungrateful. It's a choice. Another foundational thought is this, that being positive or being optimistic is not dependent upon what we feel, but comes from who God is, what God says, and how God acts. You see, if we can base the attitudes that we have, the choices of the attitudes we project, not about how we feel, but about who God is, what God says, and how God acts. That's a sea change in making us positive Christians in a negative world. Because the totality of our being, as the psalmist said, with all of my being, with everything that I am, that the totality of our being, our attitudes and our perspectives, our thoughts, are rooted in God, makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. And so this morning, I want us again to think about choosing to be grateful, choosing to have that attitude in life. And there are three biblical truths that will help us be grateful. Three biblical truths that will help us to be people that are grateful and appreciative, who offer praise, and who have the spirit of thankfulness within us. The first is this. Every good thing we have comes from God. Every good thing we have comes from God. In James chapter 1, verse 7, James writes, Every good and perfect gift is from above. <laughs> you know, if you and I go through life thinking, everything I have is because I've earned it. Everything I have is because I deserve it. Every good thing I have is because uh, of what I've done. We're going to find ourselves in a very different place and in a very different position and having a very different perspective than if you and I have a biblical perspective, which is that every blessing that I have, every good thing that I have, is not because I deserve it, not because I've earned it, but because God has given me. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. The pastor and writer Craig Rochelle tells a, uh, a humorous but poignant story about his dad. He said that uh, his dad always had this saying, and, and whenever Craig would call his dad on the phone, he you know asked, "Well, Dad, how are you doing?" And he said his dad would always say, "Son, life is good." Didn't make any difference what was going on. Didn't make any difference what what was happening. You know that was his his response. Son, life is good. And Craig said, I never knew a more positive person in my life than my dad. Because that was just not cliche for him. It was just not kind of a rapid pat response that he gave to that question. He like literally, truly meant that. And he would say, son, life is good. Craig said that his dad, for years, played professional baseball, minor league. He never was able to rise to major league baseball played minor league baseball 
uh, for many years. So he said, every frame of reference, every metaphor that his dad used to describe anything, talk about anything, was always baseball. It was always a baseball metaphor. So he said when his mom and dad would, would come and visit with Greg and his wife and stay the weekend, and, and they would come to Greg's church, that you know, his dad would always say, well, son, that message, you hit a home run. Well, that's always a, a baseball metaphor. And he said that uh, later in, in, in life, as a uh, kind of middle-aged adult, Craig's dad came to know the Lord and made a decision, was baptized and, and whatnot. And the way he told that story, the way he described that decision was he said, because of Jesus Christ, I am safe under the tag. I'm safe under the tag. It's always a baseball player. Always a baseball player. Well, he said again, son, life is good. And he said later in life, his son had, and his father had a massive stroke. And here was a man that had been so accustomed to being healthy and active and, and out and about and still kind of athletic even later in life as his massive stroke. Fred said, I go, and he said, I stay about a week, you know, and his dad is in the hospital and recovering and, and so on and so forth. But clearly, the stroke has had an impact. And uh, some of it is going to be taken care of over time with rehab and therapy, but there are going to be some, some lasting physical side effects from this stroke. And so Craig said, in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, wonder what this is going to do to my dad's demeanor. You know, that positive, just always grateful, son, life is good dad that, that I am. And so he said, after about a week, he said, I had to return home. And, and so he said, I would call my dad every, every night. And uh, dad had, had gotten home by this point. And, and again, there was some paralysis on the left side, and a lasting impact of the, of the stroke. And so he said, Dad, how are you? And he said, Son, life is good. And Craig said, No, seriously, Dad. Seriously. How are you doing? And he said, son, life is good. And Craig said, dad, look, you can't get out of the house. You've got some disability. I need you to be honest with me. How are you doing? And he said, son, life is good. And there was a pause and he said, God has given me extra innings. Life is good. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Yep. And if you and I will let that biblical principle sink within our spiritual DNA, that every good thing we have comes from God. Not because we've earned it, not because we've deserved it, but because God has given it. He will allow us to be a positive Christian in a negative world who will have a spirit of gratitude. Secondly, don't let what we want rob us of what we have. Do not let what we want rob us of what we have. That great piece of wisdom literature in the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes 6 9, it says, Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. In other words, enjoy what you have. Rather than looking around and thinking about what you don't have, don't let what you want rob you of being grateful for what you have. But how easy it is for us to do that. To let our wants override what we've already been blessed with. To rob us you know, we're, we're spoiled. We are a spoiled people. I was reminded of this in my, in my own existence this past week. I was sitting there and I was watching TV. And you know, television remotes today are made by NASA. It, it may say COPS on the bottom, it may say RCA or something, but they're all made by NASA. Because all of them have at least 30 
30 to 40 buttons on a TV remote. You with me? So I'm sitting there and I'm watching Stanley Cup playoffs and I'm wanting to flip back from one channel, Stanley Cup, to another during the commercial breaks. And just a cataclysmic thing happened that just had the potential to ruin my, my life. The remote ceased to function properly. So I'm sitting there and I want to go change channels and the changing channel buttons are no longer working on my TV remote. And, and brothers and sisters in Jesus, I want you to know, it's a good six, eight feet from my chair to the TV. <laughs> I mean, it'd take me four or five steps to get from chair to the TV. So then I realized, okay, what I can do if the changing channel buttons aren't going to work, I can always flip to the guide, right? So I go to the guide, and you know, you can scroll up, you can scroll down, then you can select, right? This is the NASA remote we all have. So I go to the guide, and I find out I discover on this exact same point that the guide button that goes up works, but the guide button that will take you down doesn't work. I said, you know, it was one of those things where I could feel my blood pressure. Literally, I'm not making this up. I could feel my blood pressure just kind of rising ever so gently, but it was, it was, it was getting a bad chest high at, at this point. And so here I am sitting in front of a big screen TV, with I don't know what you got. 70, 80 channels on TVs now. With this remote that does everything except except fix dinner. Unless you got satellite TV, then you got 300 channels. But here I am sitting here, and I think to myself, oh, how frustrated. Really? Really? First of all, TV is not always an asset. So we can begin right there. But then I kind of went back, went back into, into my own experiences and I thought, you know what? As a kid, as a young adult, for years, I was satisfied with a black and white zenith that we had at the house that had rabbit ears and we only got two channels in Rona when I was a kid, channel 7 and channel 10. And if the rabbit ears weren't right, you really didn't even get those two good. And I was perfectly happy. You know what? I had to get up and change the channel manually. You with me? But there I sat, all frustrated, getting mad at anything and everybody, because get this, my 52 button TV remote wasn't working properly. How many times in life, how many times in life, we let our wants override our appreciation of what it is we already have. Better what you have than the roving of the appetite. Because you see, gratitude turns what we have into enough. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. If we are people that are grateful and appreciative, and thankful. We're people then who say, you know what, I have enough. I have everything else. We have that perspective. We'd be positive Christians in an increasingly negative world. Third, we should turn every blessing we have into praise. We should turn every blessing we have into praise. Again, the psalm that we looked at this morning, Psalm 103, let all that I am the psalmist says. In other words, praise is a matter not of just the mouth, but of one's total being, of everything that you are. And so whether it's the NIV that says, all my inmost being, or, the, or another translation that says, let all that I am praise the Lord. That's what praise is about. It involves all of you and all of me. Because every blessing we do not turn back into praise, can easily be turned into pride. Because you see, again, we'll go back to that first point. If we think that everything that we have is a result of our earning it and because we deserve it, then it becomes a, a, 
my pride. But if we look at everything that God has given to us as coming indeed as a blessing from Him, then it becomes a source of praise and not a pride. Several years ago, a lady launched a website and it was called thankingofyou.com. Not thinkingofyou.com, but thankingofyou.com. And all the website did was it invited folks to simply post something about a person for which they were thankful. And so people began posting about, some of them began posting about their supervisors or their bosses, people that they worked with, and they were grateful for and describing, you know, how, how wonderful they were and how, what a nice workplace it was and work environment and how they kind of created and granted that. And that was up there. Books began to post things about their parents. Did they on Mother's Day and Father's Day. All this was thankingofyou.com. Friends, neighbors, all kinds of, of thank yous were going up. And it, and it really began to get traction and, and uh, the woman was really kind of overwhelmed by all the positive sentiment that people were sharing. And then she began to notice something. And she kind of had to step back and reflect. And what she began to notice was that people were posting praise and gratitude and thanksgiving for people that would never know. Some were for a mom or a dad that had passed away. Some were for a co-worker that had passed away. And so here she was seeing these posts of people praising somebody, but that person would never be able to read that, see that, or benefit from that. And she hit upon what is a biblical truth, by the way, about gratitude. And that is that the primary beneficiary of praise, particularly when it comes to praising God, is you and me. You know, God deserves our praise. God receives our praise, but God is complete and whole. He doesn't need our praise to be complete. He doesn't need anything from Nelson Harris, I can tell you that. Thus, the primary beneficiary of praising God is you and me. You ever stop and think about that? I think that is at the core of what this psalmist is saying from within his own experience that when I praise God, I praise God with my entire being. Because it is the entirety, the totality of us that benefits when we praise God. And so over the next few weeks as we think about other attitudes, other choices that we can make, attitudes that we can have that will allow us and, and grow us into being positive Christians in a negative world. Being positive people in your workplace, in your community, in your neighborhood, in your family. And start this morning by saying, God, I want to be a person that's grateful. I want to be a person that is thankful. Not because that's how I feel, but because of what you said, and have you had. Let's pray again. Father God, we praise you this morning with the totality of our being. And Lord, we recognize that good things come from your hand. Every good and perfect gift is from above. And so Lord, forgive us when we allow what we want to rob us Lord, forgive us. Rather than turning every blessing into praise, we often allow it to become a source of pride. And Lord, may we be people, positive Christians, basing that, founding that upon who you are, what you say to us in your word and through the moving of your spirit, how you act in our world and in our life so that we can be the people, the witness that you want and purposed us to be. We 
make this prayer in your holy name.